Hello everyone, it's Menenberg again. This is part two of dissecting the prompts. I have other videos on LEQ, I have other videos on DBQ, going through the rubrics, all of that. Great, watch those, watch my overview videos. There's tons of stuff out there. In these videos, I'm just gonna do a sample prompt and I'm gonna show you how to break it down. Again, the point is that you need to figure out how to understand what is being asked of you especially when it comes to the LEQ and the DBQ on the AP exam. AP Euro, APUSH, AP Modern World History, you need to know what's being asked. If you don't understand it, you're not gonna do it well and you're not gonna do it right. Figure it out, people, get some practice, let's do some together. Okay, here's our prompt for today. Rulers of empire in Africa, uh, excuse me, rulers of empires in Africa and Eurasia from 1450 to 1750 developed new methods of governing to solidify their authority over their citizens. Develop an argument that evaluates the extent to which changes in government caused the consolidation of power in empires between 1450 and 1750. Okay, so first thing you want to do is you want to be able to identify everything you're being asked to write about with this prompt. Let's take a close look. Okay, so location, we're talking about Africa, we're talking about Europe, we're talking about Asia. As I mentioned in the previous video, you do not have to, nor should you, bite off all of that space. That's a lot of land, that's a lot of different empires. You're not gonna do it with enough accuracy or with enough specificity. Pick one to two. I say pick one to two because guess what? You might be able to pick two that are just in Asia, for example, and that'll work. The prompt allows for that, but knowing those parameters is really, really important. Next, pieces theme. Okay, remember, AP Euro, A Push, you might have different themes for AP Modern World History. You got six different themes. This is an acronym. Go back and watch the themes video. But for this, you want to focus either on politics or perhaps something else closely related to politics. Because why? We have methods of governing right there in the prompt. That is absolutely a political theme. You don't want to spend a bunch of time focused on how they're interacting with the environment or farming or trading. It might be related a little bit, but the actual, in actuality, you're going to focus much more on the political structure of those given empires. Okay. Next, historical thinking skill. Causation is probably the most logical for this particular prompt, but again, the College Board's continually trying to make it more broad so you could answer or frame your structure, or your, the structure of your argument uh, with any of the three historical thinking skills. In this case, when you see the words uh, caused in the prompt, it should clue you in to the idea that this is likely going to be a causation one. Now, you might want to in incorporate a little bit of comparison because we're talking about evaluate the extent changes, government caused the consolidation. Okay, so we're talking about changes. There's multiple changes. So you're probably talking about multiple states. And if you're doing two different things, there's an integrated element of comparison already in there. But for analysis and reasoning too, you might also talk about how it represents a continuity, perhaps. That would be a complexity point opportunity. Not gonna focus on that for this video. Watch the complexity videos later. Time period, again, important because if you are talking about the consolidation of power in another time period, that would only qualify for the complexity point. It doesn't actually address what the prompt is asking. You wanna stay in the lane of 1450 to 1750. This is why I emphasize the need to understand the sequence of events rather than so many specific names and dates, okay? You need to know that the Song Dynasty happened before the Yuan Dynasty, which happened before the Ming Dynasty, rather than knowing uh, you know, the exact years start and finish of the Song Dynasty. That type of thing is gonna help you on a prompt like this because you know, hey, I, I, can't, I can't talk about the Song Dynasty. They, don't, they were done well before 1450. Okay, so I gotta move on to something else. What else does the prompt give you? Prompt gives you some stuff. Methods of governing. What examples can we think of? Bureaucracy, central government, maybe a oligarchy, democracy, absolute monarchy. You know, you have a lot of different methods that we've seen in a variety of different places. You gotta think through what those methods are and maybe what caused uh, those changes to those methods and, and how that may or may not have helped those governments consolidate or gain more power, okay? That term consolidation of power, you gotta know what that means. You gotta understand what it's referring to. What does it tell you about the specific framework? Again, it's the idea that this is helping this government, this empire solidify or maintain its power. That's what consolidation refers to, okay? 
As I mentioned in the earlier one, it's really helpful to use a quick table or chart to plan out what you're gonna write about. You don't have to do it this way. As a reminder, you're not being graded on this by the College Board. They will likely just ignore it altogether, but it helps you know how much you know, it helps you know where you're going, and it's a really good thing to get in the habit of doing. It takes two or three minutes, don't worry about it, don't stress about it. In this case, what I did was I listed a few of the empires that are in this range. I listed their location. I mentioned a couple methods of governing. There's more to it. This is just bullet point really quick and I didn't really even fill it all out. The idea is that you're starting to get a picture of, oh, I might know a little bit more about the Ottoman than I do about the Safavids. If that's you, then are you gonna write about the Safavids? No, you're not. You're gonna focus on which ones you know the most about, Ottomans and Russia. Great, I'm gonna crank out the essay about Ottomans and Russia, and I'm gonna compare them in their methods of governing and see which one had a better shot of consolidating their power, okay? I also would probably talk about what was the change. So if, if Ottomans were central government, what did that change from, perhaps? I'd also talk about the effect of that change. Well, the effect is it established the largest uh, Islamic gunpowder empire of their day. That's an effect, that's a significant thing to think about because I might be able to expand on that in my essay itself. I also want to be thinking about what else might be helpful to include. I, I really need to think about what I know and what I don't know because again, if I don't know enough about the Ottomans to write about them, I'm not going to write about them. And if I don't know about any of these empires, I'm probably gonna choose a different prompt. LEQ gives you three prompt options. You wanna pick the one that you know the most about. And doing something like this is going to help prepare you for your actual essay. Rather than write your essay from scratch and get halfway done or a third of the way done, run out of time and realize you actually didn't say anything of substance, you just were BSing your way through. That's what a lot of students do. I don't want that to happen to you and it shouldn't happen to you, okay? And again, if you need to move on to the next prompt, by doing this you save yourself time and you will be able to do that. In the next video we'll tackle one more prompt, but if you have questions leave them in the comment section and let me know what I can do to help. How can I break down some prompts for you? How can I help you get in the habit of doing that? And by getting in that habit, I promise you, again, just as a reminder, I keep emphasizing this, you are gonna be better situated. It's gonna become muscle memory, it's gonna become reflex, and when you get the AP exam in May or your unit exams throughout the year, it's gonna be no problem. So the more you do this, the more practice you get, the more prompts you break down, you're not even gonna bat an eye when this prompt gets at you on May 10th or whatever your AP exam is. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. Let me know how I can help going forward. And remember, my friends, life is about choices. We'll see you next time.